Hey y'all, welcome back to another video. So I know that title is a little clickbaity. Every filmmaker needs this lens, but the lens or at least the type of lens we're talking about today, I really do believe that every filmmaker either needs one in their kit or should at least be experienced in using one. And that is a macro lens. So this is the DZO Vespid Prime 90 millimeter macro. That's a mouthful. I picked it up a couple of months ago and I've been working on a few projects with it and it's just been the most fun time. I knew I wanted to make a video specifically about this lens and when I started shooting some sequences like the one that you saw at the beginning of this video, I really realized how incredibly powerful a macro lens really is. So in this video, I'm gonna hit two big reasons why I really do think all cinematographers or DPs or whatever should be using macro lenses or have one in their kit. And then at the very end, I'm gonna do a quick review of the DZO Vespid Prime itself, just in case you're interested in picking this one up. I'm loving it, but there's one, maybe two, but one specific thing that I don't love about it, but we'll talk about that at the very end. For now, let's talk about what I think is more important than a specific brand or lens. Let's talk about filmmaking stuff. So reason number one why I think we should all be using macro lenses at some point is it's so different than what we see with our eyes and it's so different than what we see in most media. And I realized that when I sat down and tried to make a shot list for that sequence that I showed at the beginning. I had these ideas in my head and I knew I wanted to be really in tight with the macro lens and maybe you don't know exactly what Jacob's doing at first and you're in this world of reading. I knew I wanted to see pages turning. I knew I wanted to see the texture of the book. You know, when you open a book and you smell the pages, it's just, I don't even read a lot or really at all, but the smell of book pages, the smell of the book pages in the book, the mouse in the motorcycle that I read in elementary school, it smells good, but I couldn't draw out specific frames. I couldn't visualize something exactly in my head because I don't have a solid idea in my brain what something looks like at 90 millimeters this far away. I have a good idea, and I'm sure most of y'all have a good idea of what a 35 looks like, an 85, a 24, a 14. It's easy to make a shot list with those in your head, or at least easier, but I really just had to write down a list of ideas and see what I could find once I got into shooting. The same thing kind of happens when you use like a 12 millimeter prime for the first time. So you're stuck into that one world, but it's a little different with the macro. It's a little exaggerated. It's a little macro with the macro lens. I'm sure people that shoot macro photography and videos like this all the time, have that stuff in their head. Like I knew I wanted a shot of Jacob's eye, but I didn't know what that was gonna look like when I got there. So basically I set up the tripod, pointed it at Jacob's face, and I was like, oh, that looks pretty sick. Let's get closer. And then I was like, oh, this looks really cool too. Take your glasses off, let's get a little closer. And now I'm extremely close and I'm thinking, this doesn't really do anything for my story. Like this is just a, a big, freaking eyeball <laughs> and i started to think like oh the purpose of this is a slow time enjoying reading and thinking about something peaceful a big eyeball on screen wasn't really selling that story i was talking to jake and i was like hey dude i can see the light in your eye i can see the reflector in your eye i can see them like full objects in your eye and he was like well why don't we shoot the book reflection through my eye and i was like oh that ties it in with the purpose of this video, with the purpose of this piece that I'm making. And I didn't know that that was really quite possible until I got in there and did it. The point I'm really trying to make here is that as a cinematographer, it was so refreshing and fun to use a lens that I didn't really know where it was gonna take me. I didn't really know where it was gonna transport me to and just go on this kind of creative adventure. Which brings me to point number two, this lens allows you to transport your audience basically to a different world. The first point I was trying to make is that this lens is super fun as a cinematographer. You're shooting around, you're going to different worlds, but when you stop and think about what that's gonna do for your audience, what that's gonna make them feel when they see this person's eyeball and then they're like is that the is he reading a that's the book he's reading in his eyeball you can feel your hand running across that book page you can smell that coffee in that cup you can hear this salt and pepper being cracked onto this meat and basically taste it just by seeing it being cooked in the pan that close up and i don't know if you can tell 
but I'm pretty excited about that. I was so hype and am still really hype about the idea of shooting something and kind of knowing or hoping I know what it's gonna make the audience feel like. Of course, that's all of filmmaking, but I'm talking like very specific feelings, very specific reactions, and it gets me pretty giddy to think about that. I know I'm not breaking any new ground here saying to use a macro lens, and what I'm talking about is pretty much any macro lens, not just the DZO 90mm, pretty much any macro lens can do this, and then you go over to something like the Laowa probe lens, which is an entirely different macro look, but you could say all the same things. It takes your audience and you as a cinematographer, as a storyteller, as someone that creates images to just a place that you don't get to go that often. I will say just like any other specialty tool, just like coloring, just like an ultra wide lens, just like transitions or VFX or anything else in filmmaking. Sometimes you need to be sparse with it. Like you could definitely overdo a macro lens. The point of these pieces that I was making was to make the macro lens the main focus, was to be in that tiny little world the whole time. But there probably aren't many situations where I would shoot 90% of my shots on a macro lens. Unless I was wanting my audience to feel immersed or even alienated like they're on an alien planet or something like that. All that to say, definitely something worth having in your toolbox, in your toolkit, if not literally physically, at least renting one or borrowing one from a friend to just really learn how to use it. It is another incredible filmmaking gadget for your filmmaking Batman utility belt. Just put this thing right on there. It's kind of heavy. While we're at it, let's talk a little bit about the DZO Vespid Prime 90mm macro. First thing, let's talk about the physical build of this lens. It's freaking great. It's pretty hefty. It's not that big, but it's definitely big enough. And what I mean by that is it feels chunky. It's got this full metal body build. It's heavy. I don't know how heavy it is. Maybe I'll throw it on the screen but it's also small enough, especially without the adapter on the back, that it's not even really much longer than my Sigma 35. And when I do throw this on my Sony, just the camera, no rig, no cage, no monitor, it doesn't feel too big to just carry around. Another thing I really like about it, and this pretty much goes for any long focal length macro lens, is this is a 90 millimeter lens. I can use this as just a normal 90 millimeter if I want a long telephoto shot, if I want something super compressed at T 2.8, that is a pretty compressed shot. But both the focus and aperture rings feel really nice. They have a good amount of friction. Sorry, they feel really good. That does bring me to my only gripe with this lens. And one of you probably know the answer to this. I don't know if all macro lenses are like this, but the focus throw is insanely sensitive, especially at farther focal distances. So if you're like seven to 12 feet away from me, focusing on you is like, <clears throat> like you barely move this thing. When you are within three feet, two feet of this lens, you gotta really twist this thing to get <laughs> your focus where you want it. Again, I'm sure that's macro lenses in general. I'm not really mad at it. It does make like shooting handheld non-macro stuff with this lens a little bit difficult to keep your focus. Granted, shooting handheld at 90 millimeters is kind of hard anyway, but it's a little bit extra difficult. I will say I did buy this lens for that reason, so that it could act as a long telephoto lens in my kit and a macro lens because your boy is on a budget. So I don't have time to be buying a 90 millimeter macro and then also an 85 millimeter like normal lens. I got other lenses to buy. <laughs> okay y'all, I think that's all. I'm gonna lounge back and finish this video chilling back here. I'm gonna turn my hat around. But seriously y'all, thank you for watching this video. I appreciate you clicking as always. If you have any thoughts on macro lenses, a specific one or just the concept, that we were talking about earlier talk to me down in the comments i'd love to have a little conversation and if you enjoyed this video if you felt like you got something out of it i'd appreciate if you hit the like button down below and i think that's all i have for you thank you so much again for watching i'll see you next week bye y'all